Have you noticed how modern cargo ships have flat bottoms while older ships and sailing yachts have deep keels instead? Deep keels are a very intuitive way of keeping a floating vessel stable. Essentially you have a bulky buoyant part of the hull up near the surface, placing the centre of buoyancy relatively high up in the hull. The keel is much lower, filled with a really dense heavy material such as lead, iron or, in the case of old ships, just rocks. The concentration of weight low down in the keel has the effect of moving the average position of all the weights in the vessel deep down into the hull. The force of buoyancy acts through a point higher up than the force of gravity, effectively creating a bit of a dangling effect, continuously acting to keep the vessel upright. As long as you keep the centre of gravity below the centre of buoyancy, it will be impossible to capsize the vessel. For now, we can just call this weight stability because the vessel's stability is provided by the weight located deep down in the keel. On something like a submarine, all of its stability is provided by weight stability because the position of the centre of gravity is the only thing you can control. Think about it, once you're underwater the centre of buoyancy is going to remain fixed no matter how you move so the only way you can stay upright is to make sure that the centre of gravity stays down low, either through fixed weights in the keel or through variable weights in things like ballast tanks. It's a bit different on the surface however because the centre of buoyancy can move. As a vessel sits lower in the water, the wider parts of the hull become submerged, shifting the average position of buoyancy up a little bit. Assuming the position of the centre of gravity stays the same, the vessel will actually become more stable. The magnitude of the stability is provided by the separation between the position of the centre of gravity and the centre of buoyancy. A greater separation means there's a greater turning lever acting to right the vessel when it leans over. Conversely, a smaller separation means there's less righting force when it leans over. But the thing is, for a vessel to sit lower in the water, you need to add weight. On a cargo ship, the added weight will come from the cargo, which obviously needs to be placed somewhere. You can't put it all low down in the keel because there just isn't the space, so you end up placing it in the hold or even up on deck. As you add more weight around the hull, the centre of gravity of the ship as a whole will move towards the added weight. I'm sure you can already see the problem. The more weight you add up high, the higher the centre of gravity and the smaller the separation between the centre of buoyancy and the centre of gravity. The ship becomes less stable. This isn't such a problem if you only want to carry a small amount of cargo low down in the hold, but if you want to maximise cargo carrying capacity you need a different solution and for that we can turn to some ancient craft for inspiration, the outrigger canoe. An outrigger canoe basically consists of a large hull which provides sufficient buoyancy for carrying lots of cargo and an outrigger to make it stable. The centre of gravity of the composite unit is somewhere around here and the centre of buoyancy is somewhere around here. Both are slightly off centre from the main hull thanks to the presence of the outrigger but notice how the centre of gravity is now above the centre of buoyancy. Now when the outrigger canoe leans over the writing force is no longer provided by the separation of forces alone but instead by a movement of the centre of buoyancy which in turn creates a separation of the forces. If you submerge the outrigger the centre of buoyancy shifts out in that direction because that is the new average location of all the buoyancy. That shift then creates the required separation between the location of the centre of buoyancy and the centre of gravity, forcing the outrigger canoe back upright. When the canoe leans in the other direction, the outrigger lifts out of the water and all of the buoyancy is suddenly provided by the main hull, causing the centre of buoyancy to shift sideways. Again, the separation between the forces results in a writing force being generated, forcing the canoe outrigger combination back upright. But how does this apply to a modern ship? Well, it's all about the fact that the outrigger canoe doesn't rely on weight stability, but instead it relies on stability due to the form of the hull, so called form stability. Form stability means you don't need to keep the centre of gravity down low, so you don't need to carry a massive weight in a deep keel and you can load cargo higher up in the hull. Where weight stability relied on a high centre of buoyancy, form stability relies on a high meta centre, the point at which the force of buoyancy acts through the centre line. A wider hull will have a higher meta center because a small angle of heel will shift the center of buoyancy further out. As long as you keep the center of gravity below the meta center, form stability ensures that your ship will remain upright. A wide, flat bottomed hull gives you a good amount of form stability, with a wider hull being more stable than a narrower hull and a shallower draft being more stable than a deep draft. Obviously you can also add on a nice hefty weight deep down in the keel as well to keep the centre of gravity even lower and be even more stable but it then becomes a balancing act. By making parts of the hull deeper and heavier you start to sacrifice carrying capacity for more stability. Think about it, 
Does a cargo ship earn more from carrying an extra 100 tons of lead in a keel or from carrying an extra 100 tons of cargo? Once you're stable enough, it's actually then about maximizing cargo carrying capacity to generate as much profit as possible. Cargo ships have wide flat bottoms to maximize their cargo capacity for any given draft, while smaller boats can stick with a nice deep keel and use weight stability instead, removing much of the need for regular stability calculations. Finally, I'd just like to extend a massive thanks to this channel's plus supporters on Patreon. Your support helps keep these videos free to watch across social media, so on behalf of all viewers, thank you all so much.